I love watercolor. It's so fresh and it's so spontaneous and it's so exciting. I believe very strongly that we're all born to create and I think that you can do it if you think you can. Uh, it takes desire, it takes determination, and it takes practice. But even more important when it comes to watercolor, it takes learning the basic skills and understanding the fundamental principles. And that's what I want to show you in this video. So let's start talking now about materials. I'm using a brush here that's called a one-stroke watercolor brush. It's three quarters of an inch wide and it's made of natural hair. This hair is called sabaline or ox hair. I've had this brush for about 20 years. It's a beautiful brush. The thing about this kind of brush is it's a little more expensive than some of the brushes that you find out there. But it's, it can do everything that you need to know how to do in order to uh, work in watercolor. Now you can find other brushes. For example, here's a very nice synthetic brush. It has a little bit of color to it. It almost looks like a natural brush. Uh, and here's another one. This is a light synthetic brush. Here's a lovely brush that is a blend of natural and synthetic hairs. Uh, so you can pick almost any brush that you want, but the one that I recommend is this three-quarter inch sable brush, or sabaline brush. Your brush is your best friend, and I'm going to show you how you can do a number of different exercises to learn what you can do with this brush. The next thing you need to understand is paper. Now there's a lot of paper out there and the important thing about paper is getting the right weight, the right quality, the right texture to do what you want to do in your painting. <clears throat> this for example is too thin. This is the just bond paper and you know what's going to happen with this paper. It's going to curl, it's going to buckle, uh, it's going to bleed through on the other side so you're really not going to get, you see how this is curling already. It's very difficult to, to paint with, so you don't want to use this when you're painting in watercolor. What you need is a regular grade of watercolor paper. Now this is 140 pound paper. What 140 pound means is that a um, 500 sheets of this paper in 22 by 30 inch size, which is called a full sheet of watercolor paper, is going to weigh 140 pounds. And it's a nice weight to work with. Uh, it's got a good body to it. Uh, and it's a very um, uh, easy to work with. You can work on both sides if you don't like what you did on the other side. Now you notice down here it says that this pa uh, paper is pH neutral. This is a very important point. Your paper ought to be pH neutral or it should be acid free so that it will last. Um, this means that the paper has either been treated or it's been made with quality materials so that the paper will not deteriorate through time. Now the only problem with the student grade of paper is that when you try to do your washes on it, quite often the student grade of paper is going to streak. So as you make the brush strokes, you will not get a nice overlap. You will instead get streaky marks in the washes. Uh, it has to do with the amount of sizing in the paper as a rule. There isn't quite as much sizing in a student grade of paper. So you will get these uh, streaks because the paint soaks into the paper very rapidly. So that brings us to three types of texture in good quality all rag watercolor paper, which is acid free, 140 pound again. And this surface is called hot press. Now hot press is a very smooth surface and it has a tendency to be a little bit difficult to work on. I don't recommend it for beginners, but I do recommend that once you have gotten started in watercolor that you give this one a try because it can do some wonderfully surprising things and it can be a lot of fun to see the results that come. That's one of the things that's really exciting about watercolor that you can, um, you're, you can be surprised by it and it stimulates your creativity when these things happen. Now you will notice that I didn't get the streaks in the wash that I put on this piece of watercolor paper. The one that I recommend the most highly is called the 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This also is an acid free watercolor paper. I have two different kinds here and what I want to point out here, uh, and I'm not sure you can see this on your uh, screen, but there is a d difference in the degree of whiteness of these two papers. Uh, this has nothing to do with the quality of the paper. 
uh, artists have been painting with this creamy type of paper for a very long period of time, but you will find that some uh, of the papers are a little bit uh, whiter than others. Now the cold press paper has a little more texture to it than the hot press. And this uh, is very nice to work with. You can not only get nice smooth washes with it, as we did with the last um, paper, the hot press paper, but you can also get a textured effect, a dry brush. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to do these techniques. Uh, but this is something that you cannot get on this hot press paper that I showed you first. This is the one that I recommend. The rough paper, again, is an acid-free paper, and this is a very top quality paper. This particular one has more texture. So again, you can make your nice washes, but as you can see, it has a tendency to want to break up. So you have to brush a little more carefully and be a little bit more, have a little more water in your brush as you pull that down. And again, you can get these nice dry brush effects with this rough paper. Now remember, the one that I recommend is the cold press paper. So we've done the brush. We've got one brush and we've got one paper. We've got the cold press watercolor paper, 140 pounds. What about paint? Well, let me tell you first one other thing about paper. One other thing about paper is that you might want to use it in pads, you might want to use it in sheets, or you might want to use a block. Now this is a block of watercolor paper. It's been fastened on all four sides, uh, and this gives you a nice uh, tight surface to work on. Now, paper will tend to raise a little bit and buckle just a little bit when it's on this block when you're painting with it, but when you're done, it will dry tight, and you simply take a little pocket knife and slip this around the edges of the block, and that takes the paper from the block when you're done with your painting, and then you can, you can frame that. In this little video, what I've tried to do is give you an idea of what the, the most basic things are that you need to know to paint in watercolor. These are the books that I've uh, published within the last few years. It's important for you to learn the basics, and what you do uh, in order to accomplish this is you read the books, you take classes, and most important, you practice and you believe in yourselves.